Hey, let's make Mega Man in JavaScript. We're gonna start out with a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the basics, like movement and animation. Then I wanna skip ahead and show you some nuanced Mega Man features I made by continuing these concepts in a demo. I'm gonna move pretty quick here, but don't worry, the full code's available at the end. Let's get to it. We'll create a new project with Vite, so here's the command. Call it Mega Man Demo. Just vanilla JavaScript today, no TypeScript. We'll CD into that, run npm install. NPM run dev to get it going locally, and here we go. Now here I've deleted all of the default stuff that comes with Vite, so we have a totally blank project. There's nothing going on in the browser over here. For this project, I'm gonna pull in Xcalibur JS. Xcalibur is a fantastic open source 2D HTML5 game engine. It comes with things like physics and asset handling. Physics and platformers can be really complicated, so we're gonna offload that to Xcalibur. Thank you, Xcalibur. Back in our terminal, I'll install Xcalibur by doing NPM install Xcalibur, and now we're ready to go. Now the top level, everything of this game is going to live in main.js. So let's start by bringing in the Xcalibur library, importing everything it has as EX. And I'll start with an instance of a game. Now we'll configure the game with a resolution that looks like an NES, so 256 by 240. We'll specify 60 frames per second and turn anti-aliasing off because we're using pixel graphics. This is a platformer, so we need some gravity. I'll bring in this line here. It's gonna set our gravity to a pretty high value on the Y axis. Mega Man is a robot, so he's heavy. This is gonna pull everything that opts into physics downwards. Speaking of Mega Man, we need to pull in some assets here, like sprite sheets and sound effects. I'll make a new file called resources.js. This file is gonna create some image and sound sources out of files that I've pre-prepared. So I've got a Mega Man sprite sheet. Lemon is what fans call Mega Man's bullet. Three different map rooms we'll be implementing. A couple enemies and explosions. And some other graphical effects here. We have sound effects for landing, shooting, and taking damage. We're gonna package all those things into a loader. Loaders are the way Xcalibur handles assets. So we'll export that loader and our images and sounds from this file. Back in main.js, we can import our loader. And now that we have the assets, we can start the game. Now our game is running over here, and you can see our aspect ratio is working, but the game itself doesn't look like much. So let's add some things. I'll make a new file here called hero.js. That's gonna create a class called hero that extends Excalibur.actor, and we're gonna see this a lot. Actors in Excalibur are kind of like game objects. We're gonna be able to configure each one with a position, a size, a collision shape, and graphics. There's a couple values we're gonna be using over and over and over again, so I've plopped those into a constants.js file. I've configured the hero actor with a couple values here. There's a position, a size, a collision shape. We'll scale him up by 2x. Opt into gravity here and show him as just a green box. Back in main.js, we can create a hero. We'll start him at, say, 200, 200. We'll grab our game instance and add an actor. Now when the game starts, you see our actor appears and he just falls because he's opted into gravity. Let's give him something to land on. I'll create a new type of actor called floor. This floor actor has almost all the same ideas. A couple differences, we're giving it a name just because you can, a multiplier for columns and rows in case we don't want to stick with just a square box. This actor will use a fixed collision type to keep it right in place and a solid black color. Now typically these will be invisible because we have real art to use, but for debug purposes, we can just turn on opacity. Now we can add that floor to the game. Now the hero lands right on the floor. Let's make this actually look like Mega Man. I've filled this file with all kinds of sprite animations. We'll take our Mega Man sheet. We wanna tell Excalibur how many columns and rows that sheet is divided in and how big each cell is. From there, we'll define different animations. So here's idle where Mega Man's just standing around. Here's one for shoot. We have right flips of each of these. We have running, running and shooting, being in pain, jumping, all kinds of stuff in here. We'll import those into our hero file. We'll have our actor use the idle right frame. And now we see Mega Man. Now standing on the ground is good, but as he's falling, we wanna show him in that jump pose. So let's wire that up. I'll make a new method here called on pre update. This is one of the options we have for hooking into Excalibur's game loop. From there, I'm gonna split out two helper methods. This one's gonna do all animation work. This one's gonna do all physics work. 
physics in Mega Man games gets complicated, and this is going to get crazy. So having a dedicated home for it is going to help us manage it. We'll add a flag to know if we're on the ground or not. We can update that flag in our physics process. If we are suddenly moving in the Y axis, we know that we're not on the ground. We'll make a method for handling collisions. We'll hook into post collision and check if we just collided with the floor on the bottom. And if that happened, now we know we're on the ground. In our animation code, we can check if we're not on the ground. And if so, we want to show the jump frame at index zero. And if that's not true, we can go ahead and assume the idle pose. So what's this index thing all about? Well, if I pop open the animation map, I've prepared a layout of all of our different frames. For each pose, like idle, jump, pre-step, run, all these things, we're gonna have a left-facing one, a right-facing one, a shooting version on the left, and a shooting version on the right. So if I wanna play with which way he's facing, I can change that to one. Maybe he's shooting on the left. Maybe he's shooting on the right. Go back to one. Now to make him jump on our command, I'll bring in some shortcuts to have access to the keyboard. We'll create a jump key. I'm gonna call that Z, but you could use whatever you want. In our physics code, I can check if we're on the ground. And if we are, and we just press the jump key, we'll go ahead and set the Y velocity to the jump velocity. This is saved as a constant. If we wanna play around with the jump speed, we can just tweak that value. We'll also check if we release the jump key and we're moving upwards. If so, we want to go ahead and shut off velocity. This is called variable jumping. It's a big part of the feel of Mega Man games. Over here, when I press the Z key, I can jump Mega Man. It only works when he's on the ground. And when I release, he stops jumping. So I can hold for a longer jump. Now, when we hit the ground and we weren't on the ground before, we'll go ahead and play that iconic landing sound. And now we're getting somewhere. Hey, real quick, three things I wanna point out. One, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the video. That really helps me out when you do, if you're enjoying this kind of thing. Two, if you wanna learn how to build full games with me, like start to finish, I have a whole website for that. The link to that is below. And finally, if you are working on a game, you should join our Discord community. It's full of game developers that are working on stuff. The camaraderie can really help you finish your projects. So I hope to see you in there. Let's get back to the video. Next, we'll make the background look more like the actual game. We're going to put Mega Man here in a stage, and each stage is composed up of individual rooms. In the classic Mega Man games, there were eight stages, and you could play through them in whatever order you wanted. It was really cool, really iconic. We're just going to do one stage here for now, and that stage is going to have a couple different rooms. Now, each room is going to have an X, Y position, an image that's used. Instead of a tile set or something like that, we're just going to use one baked image per room. Different floors that we stand on, just like we see here. Other objects in the rooms, like ladders, enemies, pickups, that kind of thing. And finally, camera limiting, and we'll get to that as we go. Whatever image is passed in, we'll convert it to a sprite, and then have this actor use that sprite. When a map joins the game, it's going to dynamically create all of the floors it needs and all of the objects. For example, some of the objects will have a map change trigger, ladders, and then a couple different enemy types. In the project, we'll create a new directory for all the stages. First one will be Drew Man stage. A stage is simply gonna be a list of rooms and then a little helper getter to let us know which room we should start the stage on. We'll configure the room's data up here. Off to the side, I've prepared the data. Here's what it looks like. Room one is a new room. It has an image, a position, camera limits, positions where all those floors will go. Finally, some objects, and we'll take the objects out until we implement them. In our main setup here, we'll add an instance of the stage, and we'll get rid of our placeholder floor. Now we have a background coming in. It's starting to look real. If we go back to our floor and change it from not black, maybe like green, we'll see the floor is working a little bit better. And I'll even change the opacity here so we can see what's going on. Green areas are the floor instances, and they sit above the artwork, lining up perfectly. We don't actually want to see them, though, and so we'll turn them off. Now it looks like a real scene. Now that we have a world that looks a little bit more real, let's make Mega Man move. We'll bring in the rest of his velocities and fill them in as we go. 
I'll bring in a class to help us manage the order in which the arrow keys are pressed. It's a simple list that just tells us which one has come in most recently. We'll give Mega Man one of these instances. In our physics code, we can go ahead and listen for those arrow keys to come in. This just says if we hear right or left come in, go ahead and add them or remove them from the list. Keeping the order here is an extra touch that will allow us to have better keyboard feel. Now for starters, we can just look at the arrow that's come in and change our velocity according to that. So if it's left, we'll go negative, otherwise we'll go positive walking velocity. And here's that working. We can also sync our sprite direction to whatever direction has come in in our arrow handler. And in our animation code, remember how we have one hard-coded here? We could change that to be dynamic. Now he'll face whatever way we're going. His running animation is a little bit nuanced, and so I'm going to add a custom flag here. Now as we're moving, we'll go ahead and work through those running frames. So this variable here is kind of his progress through the animation. And as he's moving, we're going to be down ticking it by however much delta time has passed. And then if we hit zero, we'll go ahead and restart it to the top. We can offload the exact frame that should be showing to this helper method. And in our animation code, if we're on the ground and moving, we can go ahead and delegate over to that method. And now we have this nice walking animation happening. One more thing, and then we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. So I can keep walking over this way. And there's actually a lot more to see over here, but the camera's not following Mega Man. So let's fix that. So now before we start the game, we're gonna add a listener. And once the game's initialized, we can go ahead and reach for a camera that's baked into Excalibur. So here's our line of code. I'm gonna move this to a different spot. We're gonna try the default camera to just see how that looks. It locks to actor passing in the hero, which is the object that we wanna follow. Now the camera follows Mega Man, and I can walk around to see more of the room. Okay, now that we've covered the basics on how everything has worked to this point, I wanna skip ahead and show you the full demo that I made. We're not gonna cover the features as closely in depth as we did before in the video, but we'll definitely crack open the hood and show you the interesting parts. And remember, you can check out the full code download for this in the description. So the first thing is shooting. So if I hit the X key here, you can see Mega Man goes into the shooting pose. He does the same thing when you're in the air. Another key thing about the shooting is that the running animation really has to line up. So if he's in the middle of the running pose, we want to make sure his arm sticks out and matches up perfectly. Let's take a look at that. So two spots in the physics code, there's this line for check for shoot input. That's basically just going to listen for the X key to be pressed. If so, the action will move to the shoot bullet method. The core of what's happening here is that the hero is spawning a new actor, and that's the bullet. And then based on the position of whether Mega Man's facing left or right, it kind of changes where the bullet spawns in the scene. So if he's facing left, it'll be on the left part of the sprite here, and then opposite for right. Also have that cool classic sound effect that's playing. Gotta have that. If we open up hero bullet and see what's going on here, Again, it's affectionately called a lemon by Mega Man fans. The bullet just initializes with a collision shape and the sprite, and that this, these dimensions kind of match the sprite. When they start, they really just pick whatever direction they're going, which is passed in by the hero, and they just kind of continue on in that direction. There's a chance they could get deflected by a certain enemy, and we'll see that in a little bit. So that's bullets. Technically, I think Mega Man's only supposed to be able to do three at a time, but I, I have it being unlimited right now. If I wander over this way, Our first enemy, his name is New Shot Man. Here's the code for him. But he kind of shifts between two different states. So he'll start by doing two of these horizontal bullets, and then he'll do one special bullet that goes right towards where Mega Man is. You can see I've got a pain thing going on. We'll check that out in a second, too. So he does his bullets. He's got a few methods in here that kind of kick off behavior. Excuse my notes. But specifically, here's the asynchronous shoot code. So he'll, he'll create two horizontal bullets, he'll wait 500 milliseconds, and then as long as he's still in the action, he'll continue to do that. He has some HP too, so there's a module called HP. It's a really simple damage tracker, but it starts with five health for him. 
I can hit him five times, two, three, four, and on the fifth time, he will explode. You can see in the code that he starts with five, and then whenever he reaches zero, this callback will happen. And that callback just creates a new explosion right in his place and then removes him, but adds the explosion at the same time. So that's kind of a cool little transition. Now I want to talk about damage real quick because we saw it for a second there. I've wired up a temporary developer demo key to just have Mega Man automatically take damage. So if I press the space bar, you can see uh, he takes a lot of damage from his health bar. There's this top level module here called Hero HP, and it starts with a count of 28. Max HP is 28. Anytime Mega Man takes damage, he emits a signal up to the watcher, and that watcher might subtract from the total number. If he ever hits zero, uh, the death handler occurs. And so let's see what that looks like. So I'll do it one more time. He explodes that way, and now the level's over. You have to reload the page. Now a little bit later on in the level over here, we can see a new thing. Here we have two ladders. So if I jump and hold the up key in the air when I'm overlapping with a ladder, Mega Man will change to this ladder climbing state. And if I get all the way to the top, I'll do this little transition. And you can, you can go down too if you're standing on top of a ladder. These things are shockingly complicated, but you can see that he can still shoot from a ladder and then he can jump too to exit the ladder. Uh, they're, they're definitely kind of buggy when you're around tight collision spaces here. It's something that still needs to be tweaked and tuned, uh, but generally kind of cool. And then if you climb a ladder to a different room, let's see what happens. There was an invisible actor right here called a room change. And basically, as soon as Mega Man intersects with that, it figures out, is he going up or down? And if so, it'll tween the camera uh, to, to basically be locked at a room below where it was before. So there's that, and I go back up again. And now I'm in a different room. You can also see that this room has a custom camera lock. So I can't go any further than this point when I'm in this room, even though in the room before, I could, queue, I could go willy-nilly kind of as far over this way as I wanted. Like it keeps going. And I'll make this jump, go over here. We got one more room up here. Now we're back outside. You can navigate all the way to the end here. I've got floors. So we get to a boss door. In the object sections of this room, I'll go ahead and take out new Shotman. I'll replace him with Pippi. Pippi's this bird. The bird drops an egg. I didn't actually get around to finishing Pippi, but let's lower that position so I can actually hit him. There we go. Okay, so now I can shoot. So there's Pippi, he drops an egg. The egg is gonna explode and have little birds come around, but I haven't gotten to that one yet. Anyway, let's check out a different enemy. Next is our hard hat, classic Mega Man enemy. So he sits right there. He just kind of goes back and forth between being up and down. And if I shoot him, he does that deflect behavior on the lemons. So I can't actually hit him right now. But in theory, when his face is open like that, you should be able to damage him. But anyway, pretty cool. So anyway, I had a lot of fun working on this as a huge Mega Man fan. It was fun to try to recreate it in JavaScript. I'd actually kind of like to keep going on it. And I, I was considering making some more videos about getting more in depth, building out more features, you know, like stage select, and of course, different abilities that Mega Man could have. And of course, boss fights, right? Epic boss fights. So if you're interested in any of that, please let me know in the comments below. Again, I had a ton of fun working on this. Excalibur JS is great to work with. I've linked that below in the description, so check it out. Thanks so much for watching this video about my little Mega Man demo here. Remember to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.